Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at a tool within Civil 3D that's going to help us organize our project information or more importantly help us you know, find project information that's in proximity of what might be our next or our proposed project. Let me explain. I'm going to start with a proposed project location. So I've got an address that uh, maybe we're going to put in a proposal, we're going to bid on this job, and I'd like to get some more information about where it's at, what the site looks like. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, and then I'm going to bring up a free utility here, Google Earth, and we'll punch that in by pasting it, and then we'll do a quick search, and it'll take us to where that project is. Now, once we see that on the screen, it would be very helpful for us if we were going to work on this project to know maybe what other projects we've done in the vicinity of this project. So that if we've done something that was nearby, maybe we could collect information about, you know, consultants or subconsultants we use, maybe the contractor, maybe we want to drill down, find survey information, benchmarks, things like that. If your firm is anything like the one that I worked at, we used to maintain all of this information in a... Um, colored uh, markers on tax maps or maybe sticky notes, you know, someplace else to identify it. At the end of the day, you know, if we just had the, the project name or number for that particular project and we knew that it was nearby, then we could look in our own system to find it. And we had a lot of very manual ways to go about doing that. So what I want to show you today is through a simple tool in Civil 3D, we can actually facilitate the process of finding this information by using a very powerful free tool, Google Earth. So let's flip back to Civil 3D and I'll show you how that works. We'll start by opening up a drawing here. I've already got it open. We'll flip over to that, uh, that tab. And I've got a project here that maybe we've completed in the past and I've just created some polylines around the outside down to identify the different parcel areas for that. I'm going to shut off the imagery because we won't need that for right now. And what I'm, I'm doing is I'm just adding a piece of text to it to indicate the project name. Now, whatever we put in here ultimately is going to be loaded up into Google Earth. So, um, you know, maybe helpful to have additional information. Like I said, in some cases, just having the project name is going to be enough that we can then drill down another resource so you can add whatever text will be, uh, will be helpful for you in that process. So all we have to do, create the uh, polylines to represent the boundary, put our text in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and the, the tool for today we're going to be looking at is around exporting KML. So I'm going to double pick on export KML. We'll give it a name. In this case, we'll call it uh, Project Y. We'll say next. Uh, objects. I'll select the objects that I'd like to export. So we'll go ahead and window those off the screen, including the text. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and export that text as well as I'm going to leave the box checked to export object information. Object information can be helpful if it was like a civil 3D alignment. Some of that data would be uh, available to us in the Google Earth area as well. So we'll leave that checked. There might be, in our case, maybe not, but in the future, civil objects may be helpful to uh, have access to that data. Very important that the information that we're working with is geo-referenced because if it's not on a known projection, the folks at Google Earth aren't going to know how to be able to display that on the planet itself. So in my case, I've got a projection already established for this, Illinois State Plain East Zone U.S. Foot. So we're good there. Next, it's going to need to know what elevation it should be placed at. I'm just going to drape the objects on the ground. Uh, even if the object of the line that I was working with was a 3D poly that had elevation information, I just want it for the visual purposes, so I'm going to drape it on the ground just so that I can see it. Next, we'll give it the file where we will save that. I'm going to go ahead and just save that right now onto my desktop in a folder here called Tuesday. We'll export, and then we'll hit View. And in some versions of Google Earth, it'll actually zoom out. In some cases, it'll zoom way in. It has to do with the API that's involved, but that's okay. We can come over here in either event, and we can drill down and, and see it even clearer by, uh, by coming in and looking at, under Project Y, we'll come down and look at the polyline. And if I double-pick on that, it will zoom up, and we will see our project. All right, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and then hold down the left wheel, or I'm sorry, the left mouse button, and then I can move up and down to where I'm looking straight down on it again, and I see my, my project area in view. And as we back out, it's pretty cool in that it leaves the piece of text visible, much like a, a larger city, 
so that wherever our project is uh, or the project site we're interested in, we'll be able to see those in proximity to where we are. So if we were to zoom in now to look at this project, this site, we can see now almost immediately that's where it is. And as we back out, we can see Project Y, we've got access to that. Now, having shown this, it uh, can be important that, hey, you know, I've got a bunch of projects. What if I load them in? How do I move them from machine to machine? Well, if we come into the system here, uh, the folks at Google Earth have given us a nice tool that if I right click at any point within this organizational structure, there is an option here for email. That if I go out and email, I can select a, a email program. In this case, mine would be Outlook. And I would type in a name and it would automatically package up from here down into a uh, KMZ file, email that, we could open that on the other machine, and then all of the information would be available there as well. So very easy to transfer this from machine to machine. So for example, let's go ahead, I'm going to right click this guy and we'll just take and delete him. So it's out. And let's say that I've gone through the uh, export exercise already, we've done the email. What I would do is come up here to the top, we'd go to File, Open, and then this is the name of the file that would be exported. Custom, I gave it the name Custom Projects, but it has a KMZ extension. We'll go ahead and open that. We'll highlight it first and then we'll open it. And when we do that, it automatically adds those to our, our system. All right, so by default, it'll put it into my temporary places. I could just as easily, I'm sure if you use Google Earth, even just exiting, it's going to give you the option to write it to my places and then they'll be available all the time. All right, so very quickly, I can now begin to use this as a tool. I'll show you one more thing. Uh, some folks, maybe the project name isn't enough that, you know, hey, it would be great if I could get access to a little more data as well. That is possible. I'm going to zoom up on Project Y here and just show you one uh, strategy here of how we could do this. Is I could take and uh, add a place mark. All right, now when that goes in, I can kind of move that wherever, you know, makes sense. I'm going to leave it here. And once again, these place marks will be in my temporary places. I could export those as well. But uh, to show you what we can do with the place mark, I'm going to give it a name. I'll call this uh, Project Y Info. And it's already got a, a coordinate, if you will, as far as where it'll be placed. And then I'm going to click on Add Link. And then instead of uh, going out to a website or typing in a URL, I can actually find files off my system. So the trick to that is, in this case, I've got it on my C drive, but I could use a network drive as well. I'm going to put in C colon, and the files happen to be in a, a projects folder. Let's take a quick look at that. If we um, bring up the Explorer here, we'll drill down into C just to show you what we're looking for. We'll come down under Projects. And you see I've got a text file here. I'm going to go ahead and double click to open that. And it's just a text file where I've added some information. So I've got the project name, description, some location data, a little bit about the contractor, maybe a contact name, even some information about the survey where they could find a benchmark. Just some typical things that might be helpful. So like I said before, I could put that on a network drive. We could have that additional information about our projects and and make this tool even more um, inclusive as far as the information we can retrieve. So the only trick that I need, there's actually two. One, instead of a backslash, I'll use a forward slash. We'll call it uh, projects as far as my folder, forward slash, and this is project y.txt. I'm going to click OK, and it'll build the HTML language for that. Uh, we'll come down here. And I'm going to call this, uh, this is the tip, if you will. Uh, we'll say Project Info. All right, once that's created, I'm going to click on OK, and now that will be available to me here. So I'm going to click on the my place marker. We see the tool tip that was just created, Project Info. And when we click on that, it automatically makes that information available to us directly within Google Earth. All right, I'd point out one more thing. Um, if you click on that uh, place mark, if you test this yourself, and that doesn't pop up, yeah, there is an option that gives us that ability. So if we go to Tools, Options, and then we come down to General, uh, we will want to make sure that we um, put a check mark in the box to give the system access to that, because by default, that likely won't be checked on your system. All right, so if it's not checked, when we click it, it won't bring up anything. 
Um, but if, like I said, if you want to test it, you go ahead and check this box and, uh, and everything should work out fine. So with that, I uh, hope you find the information helpful. I know that for me, it would take a process that we would have had that would have been very manual and it turns it into something that can be automated and we can find our information quite easily. So hope this helps and I'll talk to you again soon. See ya.